In this video, I'm going to go over some possible solutions to why this style Briggs & Stratton engine doesn't have any compression. I'm going to make it real easy for you. This is Rudy from Take a Bath Productions with another video showing you how to fix various things. If you're a subscribed member to my community, then welcome back. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking that subscribe button below and please like this video if it was helpful for you. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so I've drugged these things home from a yard sale before and uh, they have no compression. So this is a problem I've seen a few times. I've, as you can see here, I've got a compression gauge connected to the lawnmower and I'll pull it through a couple of times so you can see what I'm talking about. I don't know if you could tell or not, but the, uh, the gauge was reading about five pounds, which isn't much. So I'm going to go through a couple of things that uh, the problem could be. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take the top of this thing off. It's very easy. It's these three 5 16 bolts right here, and it just lifts right off of there. I'll show you that in a second. But also, if you need parts for your mower, this is a sticker, unfortunately, and this one is halfway coming off. So hopefully yours still has a sticker on there. Here's a, a close-up on it right there. If you take your phone camera and hold it on that uh, figure right there, it'll come up, BriggsAndStratton.com like that, and then when you click on it, it should bring you right to the, there's the engine model number, 09P702. So if you need parts for your mower, hopefully your sticker is still there, and you can uh, refer to that. All right, just take these three 516 screws out bolts get that out get that out of the way now uh, sometimes when these things sit for a long time you can get a problem with the valve sticking and if the valves stick then you're not going to have compression so I want to check that first I want to take this rocker cover off uh, it's just these three 5 16 bolts right here now be careful of this gasket right here. Uh, I've looked online and these gaskets, there are some of them on eBay, but they are a little bit hard to find. If you go to Parts Tree or places like that, they'll say that it's unavailable. Um, I did manage to find some on Sears Parts Direct, uh, but the best bet is, is if you don't ruin your gasket, you can probably get away with using it again. But if not, and you need a new one, I'll post the part number in the description and hopefully you'll be able to find one whenever you're watching this video. So it's just three more 516 screws. And also, uh, if you've been running your mower fairly recently, you might have some oil in here. So it's a good idea to keep a rag down below like so uh, to catch that oil so it doesn't get all over the place. I think this one's been sitting for a while, so it should be okay. Here's the gasket right here. This one actually looks like it's in pretty decent shape. So one way you can check these valves is, is to um, kind of push. You can see that springing back like that. Right there, springing back, springing back. So those valves, I think, I think they're okay. I'm pretty confident of that. So I suspect a uh, possible head gasket. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the muffler and I'm going to remove the carburetor. Uh, that way I can get to everything. Um, I like to remove the muffler first. It makes this choke linkage here a little bit easier to take off of there. There's just two bolts right here, one in the top and one in the bottom. And looks like those might be 5 16ths. Let's see. Yep, 5 16ths. Now keep these separated. The, uh, the muffler bolts are a little bit longer than the ones in the carburetor. Uh, so the ones in the carburetor are just a little shorter. That's how you can identify those. And usually the muffler bolts look a little burned or heated up. There you go. Set that aside. We'll just pull this uh, air cleaner off of here. There's two 5 16 bolts on that and two 7 millimeters. And these two inner ones are 7 millimeter. 
Now it's a good idea to pinch the fuel line if you've got fuel in there. That way the, uh, the fuel doesn't get all over the place. I've already pinched it. I've pre-pinched it. Just squeeze that clamp and pull it back and then carefully work your fuel line loose. Pull the governor off of there and carburetor's free. Just set that aside. And if your lawnmower's been sitting, uh, refer to this video I have here on this carburetor to, uh, to clean it out. This is an easy carburetor. It's plastic. But it does, uh, it does cause problems sometimes. Okay, so the head's ready to pull off of there. It's just four bolts. And these are 10 millimeter. I forgot to mention on the um, rocker cover, if yours doesn't come off very easy, it's inside of this cove right here, which makes it hard to get a screwdriver in there to pry it. You can just use a rubber hammer and lightly tap that in the outward direction like so, and that will uh, break that loose from the gasket and hopefully preserve your gasket. These bolts are all the same, so don't worry about getting them mixed up. All right, so get your push rods out of there before something happens to those. Don't worry about mixing them up. They're both the same size, exactly the same size. So just clean those up and set them aside. All right, so I'm gonna scrape this head gasket off of here. Um, it's too destroyed to see if that's what the problem was or not. I believe it was. Uh, one thing you can do to check the rings is to uh, take the piston down to, uh, to the bottom here and put some liquid in there, some gas or some oil or something like that, and turn the motor up so that it doesn't leak out, and see if that leaks down past the rings. Now, of course, if you do this, especially with gas, and it leaks past the rings, it's going to get into the oil, so keep that in mind. You're going to need an oil change, but I suspect these rings are fine. I'm not going to do that test, but it is a test that you could do. When you're cleaning this up, be careful not to use anything too aggressive that will damage the block and kind of round off the corners. You want to keep that machine work done very well. And the same thing on the head, you also want to make sure not to use anything too aggressive, like a power sander or something like that. All right, got this surface cleaned up real nice. Um, I just use a razor real gently to scrape off the, the heavy stuff right there. And then I went behind it with a little bit of brake clean and steel wool to, uh, to clean the rest of that off. So caution you, if you do wind up using steel wool, that uh, steel wool tends to leave back uh, metal fibers. So make sure you get those metal fibers cleaned out of here. Make sure you get them cleaned out of here real good. You don't wanna leave any metal fibers like that behind. Did the same thing to the head and uh, got that cleaned up real nice. Now one thing I wanna caution you about on the head when you're handling this and flopping it around potentially using an air compressor to blow the dirt out of it, which is what I would do. Uh, make sure that these little um, heads on these valves, see, let me see if I can get one out. Well, they won't come out, but they will come out if you're not watching and it'll, you'll lose it and it'll, if you're blowing it outside, it'll fly across the yard and you're gonna have one real nice time trying to find that. All right, got our new head gasket here. This is part number uh, 799586, I believe, and I will post a link in the description. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind on these is, um, depending on who you order it from, they may not want to ship these very nice, and they'll put it in a floppy envelope, and these can get bent, and when these get bent, they're junk. So we're going to put our head gasket in there. Very simple. Best way is to get a couple of bolts started right there to hold the gasket in place. Don't worry about the push rods yet. Uh, that's coming up here in a second because you're going to have a really hard time trying to hold them push rods and get the head on at the same time. Uh, so I've got a fix for that. Just get the head started. All right, once you get all four of your bolts in, just leave them real loose. Just get them threaded in there just a few turns. Now you can get your push rods in because you've got a space here. All right, the rocker arms will move out of the way enough to feed the push rods through and just feed them through.
All right, you can kind of feel when they get back into their spot. And that's it. So now when you push the head up, kind of put your rocker arms on top of the push rods, push your head all the way back. Now we're good to go right there to tighten it up. All right, just snug these down, but don't tighten them. Need to torque them down. All right, torque spec on these are 140 inch pounds, not foot pounds, 140 inch pounds. So just kind of go back and forth on that and just tighten them up slowly. I am kind of crisscrossing these. There it went. All right, that should be good to go. Okay, so real quick, we do need to adjust the valves. Now you need to, uh, to check the valve clearance uh, with the uh, piston at top dead center on the compression stroke. And the way that you can tell if you're on the compression stroke is you'll have two loose rockers. That means the valves are both closed. You can stick a screwdriver in there lightly and uh, you can feel where top dead center is at. Here's, let's see. Here's the other top dead center. So we have tight valves, so we know it's not that one. So that's how you can tell. Top dead center is right there. Right there, I usually like to go a little bit past. And we have our loose valves. Now the exhaust valve is on top, intake is on the bottom. Exhaust clearance should be seven to nine thousandths. Intake should be five to seven thousandths. All right, so here's our seven for the exhaust. Let's see what this looks like. That's good. It's got a little drag right there. I'm going to leave that one by itself. And this one, this one probably is a little bit loose, so we're going to adjust that one. I'm using a Torx 10. Um, the inner nut here, the, the Allen key, is the um, actual lock and the big nut on the outside is the adjustment. So you would loosen that first, and then this is your adjustment with the nut. All right, that's our intake, so we're gonna use our five thousandths. Tighten that puppy down right there. So we have a little bit of a drag there, and I kinda like to hold these. I kind of like to hold these while you're tightening it up. That way it doesn't move on you. It's pretty tight. Let's see, that's good. We got a little bit of a drag right there. All right, so that's all there is to adjusting those. Now I'm gonna put the, uh, the rocker cover back and the muffler and the carburetor and we'll come back to it and see what we got. Okay, got it all back together. Got the compression gauge hooked back up. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention the, uh, the torque spec on the rocker cover was 50 inch pounds. I'll post those specs in the description. And uh, full disclosure, I did use a little bit of gasket maker on that, uh, a thin layer. I didn't trust that old gasket, okay? So I did that. Let's go ahead and uh, pull on it and see what, what she does. All right, well, we had about 50 pounds. That, that's a little bit low. Uh, mowers are usually a little higher than that, 80 or so. Uh, but anyway, I think it's gonna run fine. Let's go ahead and put the spark plug back in it and fire it up and see what we got. Runs like a champ. Okay, I hope this video was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.